This video is not intended to encourage or glorify any kind of drug use. The sole purpose of these videos is to educate you on the dangers of what these substances can do to you. Please do not do any of the acts mentioned in this video. I repeat, do not do any of the acts mentioned in this video. Let me preface this by saying, do not try to get high off a prescription or over-the-counter medications. It's very bad for your heart, liver, kidneys, mind, soul, relationship with God, and your life. I'm very lucky to have not died this day or all the other times I took absurd amounts of OTC medication or Datura, fake acid ones that ruined my life, and all kinds of stupid pill experimentation, including mixing Benadryl or Datura with heroin. Once I did a little bit of DXM in heroin, I'm not proud of this because I have a friend who died from this shit. Rest in peace, C. So let's get into my backstory with what happened leading up to this, because yes, it happens, but not many people start out with a dose like 1400 milligrams of an antihistamine. I was depressed from a breakup that basically changed my life forever. I still haven't gotten over it, probably because of all the damage I've done to my brain. But I know this is a trigger for some people who don't really say it, so I won't get into it too much. I started experimenting with alcohol and getting really fucked up. This was after I'd started smoking weed a year prior, and a lot at that. I started wanting something stronger. I wanted heroin. I wanted to try it. I wanted to know what it felt like to be at peace with everything. But I asked around and asked around, but couldn't find any. So I started getting into DXM. I realized that when taking larger than recommended amounts of NyQuil or DayQuil and go on a walk in the spring weather and hit my cart, I felt abnormally peaceful. Everything was extremely colorful, and I didn't know why, but something in my brain recognized it was the NyQuil and DayQuil. So eventually, yes, I did switch to Mucinex, which is bad, but not as bad. I don't like acetaminophen, and it's very dangerous. But I got really into DXM, and I started doing it every time I could get my hands on it. I was 15 at the time, and doing it all summer long. Eventually, I discovered a plant called Datura. Most of you on here know about that, and started experimenting with it. But eventually, I started doing acid, and loved it. Never had a negative experience, except when I took three tabs of what most likely was 25i or some other dangerous research chemical, as I had a very bad reaction, and it ruined my life. So to cope with what literally felt like mild existential trauma for months after, I would just take absurd amounts of DXM and DPH, sometimes mixing them and getting very strong trips. Eventually, I got fired from my job months later for basically being in psychosis. Constantly from how high I was at work, I would go on DXM, Benadryl, Acid, and sometimes Zatura on my worst days. Thankfully, I don't even so much as smoke one hit of weed before work now, as my brother has taught me the importance of getting work done efficiently, and my job is more active and difficult now. So now it just became a hollow boring point in my life where I was so depressed from the way fake acid changed my brain that I just laid in bed all day, watching YouTube or just staring at the wall, high or not high, tripping or not tripping. At this point, I was constantly walking to the Datura field near my house because I was just looking for some escape, but I started noticing that I was taking absurd amounts of seeds and feeling nothing but the dry mouth and tiredness, feeling mostly coherent for some reason, even off hundreds. So eventually I got off that and realized that the DPH was doing the same thing. No more visuals, no more audio hallucinations, no more fun not even at a thousand milligrams. So one day, I got the bright idea to use my prescription medicine, which I had experimented with before in half of the dose of this specific day, but only like two times, to try to trip, since my tolerance to Visterol, aka Hydroxazine, 
just had to be lower, at least in my mind. So I decided while being home alone in my house on a warm summer day to take a thousand milligrams and see how I felt. So I took all the chalky, disgusting white pills, 50 milligrams each, 20 of them, and decided I would sit and wait for something to kick in. I don't remember perfectly, but I'd say it had been about 30 minutes, and I remembered that I loved taking showers while tripping, so I redosed some more, 200 more milligrams, and got in the shower and sat there. It was at this point I think I started feeling it a little. It was nice at first, my head felt nice and cloudy, and I was a little shaky, but I realized something right away about this high of a dose of hydroxazine. It didn't feel as quote unquote clean as Benadryl. It felt almost a little painful on my insides, like they were drying out rapidly, more rapidly than usual. I sat in the shower for a long time. The warm water did feel good. I was cold, very cold, shivering. So I sat in the shower and looked at the visuals, but once again, like the Benadryl, they failed to intrigue me very much, but also less than the Benadryl too. I didn't necessarily feel like I was seeing patterns and swirls and strange glitchiness to the world like on Benadryl. It was more like my eyes felt so incapable of seeing, and that was about it. Nothing trippy yet, nor would there ever really be. I sat there for probably close to an hour, waiting for some kind of extreme mental change and for the trip to take over the negative body load, but it never happened. I eventually got up and out of the shower, which was actually a really difficult task to do. My legs were shaking and wobbling and jumping, and I had to hold on to the wall for fear of falling, and slowly got dressed and tried to put my cross necklace on, which was also a very difficult task to do. I have to open the chain with my thumb and slowly guide the small chain through the thumb part while holding it with my thumb. Any flexing of my muscles made my hand shake rapidly like a severe dementia patient, which actually really hurt my heart, especially in that state, but I eventually, by the will of God, got it on. After that I was so cold, but also not feeling what I wanted, so my dumbass took 200 milligrams more. It was at this point I decided to put on some ASMR because when I take DPH, ASMR is very pleasant for me. The tingles feel like a hit of a drug in itself. So I put on some unintentional ASMR videos of people making shoes and clothes. I remembered at one point while I was watching a video of a man sewing a suit together, I realized that I was not getting the desired tingles. I almost felt numb to them basically, as if I was on DXM. The sounds were relaxing, but I couldn't seem to get that rush. So I decided, it had been about two hours, that I should smoke and listen to some music finally, and this would help lighten up the experience. So I hit my small one-hit bowl, and only did half of it as I felt really fucked up already, and sat back. I don't remember if I did any more of the bowl, but I know for a fact, as I turned on some music, it all went downhill. I started shaking rapidly, might I add. Smoking the bowl was an extremely difficult task. It took about five minutes to get one good hit. I was shaking so bad and kept burning myself with the flame, so I think I most likely gave up smoking after smoking half for the full one hitter bowl. The metal bowl was getting too hot and I couldn't stand it anymore. I was listening to Green Day's Longview, an excellent trip song noticed it was kind of like Benadryl, but different. Instead of the music sounding faster than normal and lower pitched, it sounded normal pitched, but the music kept speeding up and slowing down. And when the guitar part kicked in where Billy Joe says, bite my lip and close my eyes, the guitar felt very loud and almost painful to my ears and brain. And the speeding up and slowing down started scaring me as I had never experienced anything like this off an antihistamine. It felt like I had brain damage or something and my heart felt like it was beating through the roof. Painfully, my chest hurt and I could feel how hot my chest was getting from the speed of my heartbeat. My blood felt like it was prickling me as it flowed through my body. This was starting to get very unpleasant. It was then that I decided I would call my dad for help and tell him what I did. My heart and body felt so terrible, I was scared I would drop of a heart attack at any minute, and 
and I was panicked. I called my dad and told him what I took, and he was mad, but also worried. He said he was coming home to take me to the hospital, but after we hung up and I realized I would hopefully be fine, I realized my dad is 40 minutes away at work and I felt like that was precious time I couldn't waste. So I called 911. They were used to my calls. Whether it be out of me taking some absurd amount of pills and alcohol, some concerned friend calling the police as I post stupid incoherent shit on my story while on DXM, or me calling them out of pure delusion asking if they thought I had done anything wrong, as at this point in my life, after that fake acid, my whole view is different and it feels like everyone hates me and thinks I'm a criminal, but I don't know why. I was still listening to music in the hopes of me calming down. The weather outside was nice and being outside waiting for the ambulance was helping me. As the ambulance pulled down the street, about 5-10 to 10 minutes later, but what felt like 30, I was listening to Lounge Act by Nirvana and as Kurt starts screaming, truth covered in security, and the guitar picks up, my eyes start rolling back in my head from the music pleasure and I am cool with it as I know the ambulance is here and I'm probably gonna be okay. Might I add, I don't think this helped, but the 911 operator told me to administer Narcan, and I felt better mentally after doing this, but I don't know if it helped. On the way to the hospital, I was listening to music. Queen's Cool Cat sounded amazing to feel the motion of the ambulance and the safety of going to the hospital. When I got there, it was crowded, and it took a minute for them to take me back. I was nervous there after I turned my music off. They didn't hook me up to anything, which I still wonder to this day if it was a medical mistake. Maybe there was nothing they could do, but they didn't even give me IV fluids or check up on me that much. I figured it was more severe, but I'm still very thankful the paramedics came to my house. I love doctors and being in the presence of them. While laying in the bed, I still felt terrible, like my body kept seizing up and like there was no comfortable position to sit in. My heart still raced like crazy. After I started to come down and my dad showed up, I started feeling a little better. So eventually I was good enough to go home, and so I did. Walking was still a little difficult, but the shaking and heart beating out of my chest stopped. So me and my dad got some Wendy's on the way home from the hospital. Always be sure to eat some food after an experience like this. I don't take Visceral or Benadryl or Datura or even DXM anymore and I've been trying to stay sober, save for the occasional shroom trip or a night drinking in moderation and weed every day, which I hopefully plan to stop eventually. Stay safe out there, stay sober, and please don't do what I did. God bless.